Whether you've owned a PlayStation or not, you'd probably be able to recognize most of these accessories. But what about this little dude, or whatever this thing is? There's a lot of strange accessories for the PlayStation. You may know them, forgotten about them, or didn't even know they existed in the first place. So today, we're looking back at some of the more offbeat ones. First up, the Pocket Station. No, it's not a Tamagotchi, but actually a memory card and a personal digital assistant for the PlayStation 1 that also added some on-the-go functionality with select PlayStation games, making this sort of like Sony's first handheld console thing. Now, you may be like, dude, so it's like the Dreamcast memory card, in which you're exactly right, man. Six months before this was released, the Sega Dreamcast came out in Japan, and one of its key and most interesting features was the visual memory unit, the memory card slash second screen that went into its controller. The Pocket Station was PlayStation's answer to Sega's VMU. However, unlike the Dreamcast, it was only released in Japan. And wouldn't you know it, it actually outlived the Dreamcast by one year, being discontinued in 2002. Interestingly, it was revived in an app for the Vita in 2013, but again, only in Japan. Back in 2004, two years before the Wii, something else beat Nintendo to the motion control revolution. Hori's Katana, the Soul Controller. <laughs> This was specifically bundled with Anamusha 3 Demon Siege for the PS2. It was wireless and featured all the buttons of a DualShock, but just bunched up and amalgamated onto the katana's handle. And most importantly, you could swing it wildly to kill off demons. It was ergonomically questionable to say the least. It was Hori's first US product and well, they certainly chose one hell of an item to break out into the Western market with. Maybe it didn't quite take off the same way as the Wii remote, but its legacy lives on to this day through Super Lewis 64, who managed to get it working with Ghosts of Tsushima. Next up, the iMode. Did you know the PlayStation 1 had a web browser through a cell phone? Released only in Japan, the whole thing was a partnership between Sony and Docomo to grow the cell phone's gamer base. Using the cable, you could play its games through the console on your TV and even surf the World Wide Web. Also, it actually worked with some PlayStation games like Dragon Warrior Monsters 1 and 2, allowing you to upload monsters from the PS1 into the mobile version of the game. Or in weirder kind of fourth wall breaking ways like with the game One Piece Mansion where you'd receive emails from characters in the game. I wish I worked with games like Jackie Chan's Stun Master just so I can get an email from him saying happy birthday or dear Kurt, let's fight like gentlemen, love Jackie. Hmm. Ah yes, the Namco Negcon Racing Controller. This was designed specifically to emulate dual joystick controls of the arcade game Cyber Sled when it was ported to the PlayStation. It's definitely confusing to look at and understand at first, but despite its esoteric design, plenty of other racing games took advantage of it, like Ridge Racer and Gran Turismo. By rotating either side, it simulates a steering wheel turning left and right, and strangely, it doesn't feature the usual symbol-based cross, square, circle, and triangle buttons, but rather B and A buttons. Hmm. The Floppy Disk Memory Card Reader Sometimes the standard PlayStation memory cards just didn't have enough space, and in an era prior to external hard drives, some third-party companies had to get a little innovative with game files, like using floppy disks with a detailed memory drive. Now, honestly, this actually wasn't all that bad of an idea. Floppy disks were way cheaper than PlayStation licensed memory cards at the time, so in theory, this was a more affordable way to go. Albeit a less convenient one, as it also needed to be plugged in. So carrying that and some floppy disks to a friend's house just to show them you have Dr. Boscovich unlocked in Tekken 3 would have been kind of a chore and, well, straight up super uncool. Today, the memory drive can be yours for $200 opposed to PlayStation memory cards which are actually more affordable today than they were all those years ago. So yeah, maybe in hindsight, uh, this didn't make that much sense. There we have it. Now with the PlayStation 5's left field design, here's to hoping that it'll influence some strange and unusual accessories as well, because weird is good. Stay weird. Also, while making this episode, I learned that there's a lot of, let's say, fascinating controllers out there for the PlayStation. So be on the lookout for a video all about that in the coming weeks. Anyways, I'm Kurt Davina. Till next time, see ya.